Hey everyone, I hope you're having a nice weekend so far. Last week I released my Guardian of the Warp build, and in the comments one of my viewers said that they were using a build that utilized Soul Blaze to its fullest potential. But, since they hadn't given us the full build, I took it upon myself to make my own version of it. So today, I wanted to show you my version of creating a Fire Mage within the world of Darktide. Let's start with the loadout. Now originally they had said they were using a Blaze Sword with Deflector and Blazing Spirit. Now you can absolutely do that, however, I found it quite difficult to kill most of the elites one on one within the match. So instead, I opted in for using my Mark IV Dueling Sword, and the best part about this weapon is its heavy moveset. You really only ever need to chain heavies, and it does a ton of damage to elites. Since the elites were really bothering me, I went with damage to carapace and flak armored enemies for my perks. And for my blessings, I went with precognition for more finesse damage whenever I dodge an attack, and rampage, which increases our damage even further. If you don't want to worry about dodging as much, you can actually take shred instead of precognition. Just note that Precognition helps a ton with chaining heavies, since dodging and lining up the next heavy is extremely quick. In my opinion, Shred would be a better pick if we were solely using this for horror clearing, and sadly we're not. To stick with the theme of fire, I went with the Pregatus Force Staff. You can use this whenever hordes push in, or a group of ragers or maulers rush in. I went with damage to maniacs and carapist armored enemies, since they are usually grouped up whenever I run damnations. Upon testing, I actually prefer to use Warp Flurry, which will lower our charge time for our charge up, and Warp Nexus, which actually grants us critical chance based off of our current peril. As for my curios, I leaned into having full toughness blessings, since we have tons of ways of sourcing out more toughness replenishment. If you're afraid of going down, you can always trade out one of your toughness curios for a wound instead. As for the perks, I went with having more combat ability regen so we can relieve our peril faster. I also paired that together with toughness regen speed, as well as some boost to our health and overall toughness. Channeling as much cooldown reduction as we can will help with relieving our peril quickly, as well as activating our ability modifiers that will create a nice synergy of Soul Blaze all around us. But to see how we accomplish it all, let's go over our talent tree and discuss how effective this loadout can be for the whole team. Keep in mind, your job is to utilize your Blitz on any specials from range, and whenever hordes of enemies push in, you want to use your staff to purge them. Since we're already talking about the Blitz ability, let's start there. I chose to have Brain Rupture as my Blitz since it allows us to do immense single target damage. You'll want to use this whenever you can, as it can usually kill any specialist with at least one charge up. This is also how we get our Soul Blades to start spreading amongst the Horde, even at a distance. As for our Blitz modifiers, we want Kinetic Flare. This grants all of our attacks 10% chance on hit to cause a Brain Rupture. It has an incredibly low cooldown of 15 seconds as well, and this can usually proc whenever we're not in critical peril. And with Kinetic Resonance, we can actually charge our Brain Rupture 75% quicker, and generate half the amount of peril for 10 seconds after the use of our combat ability. Speaking of our combat ability, I found that with using Venting Shriek, we could push our use of Soul Blaze even further. This ability can stagger any enemies in front of you upon activation, but with our modifiers, we can push its limits even further. With the ability modifiers, I wanted Becalming Eruption because it decreases our peril generation by 1% with each enemy hit by our Shriek. A great way of seeing visually how many people we've actually hit with our Eruption is using our other modifier called Creeping Flames. This ability can actually apply up to 6 stacks of Soul Blaze on our enemies as long as we're in critical peril. This should always be used no matter the occasion, since we have ways of maintaining a lower cooldown anyway. This can also aid the team immensely in harsh conditions, as it will create space for people to adjust and reset their positions in a fight. Now for our aura, I went with having Seer's Presence again, for a nice 10% cooldown reduction for us and our allies. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's a great way to help everyone in coherency. Now for our Keystone ability, I went with Empowered Psionics, since using our Brain Rapture will come in handy way more often than you think. Lots of specialists and elites roam damnation in packs, so with this ability we can actually use a stack of Empowered Psionics to enhance our Brain Rupture. One stack will charge our Blitz faster, it'll make it hit harder, and best of all, it'll cost us no amount of peril. Alongside with that, we want to take Charged Up, which will allow us to hold up to 3 stacks of Empowered Psionics. This Keystone modifier will set up everything we need to constantly keep our flow of power regulated. We'll also need Overpowering Souls, so Elite Kills will always grant us at least one stack of Empowered Psionics. Now if you do this right, every elite enemy that you kill will reset the original stack, and you can keep chain killing everything without ever worrying about your peril going up. And lastly, we also want Psychic Leeching, for easier toughness replenishment for the whole team whenever we use a stack. You'll see that most of my passes are leaning towards toughness regen and the spreading of Soul Blaze. With Battle Meditation, we can actually have a 10% chance to quell 10% of our peril on kill. This can feed nicely whenever we need to keep spraying flames amongst the horde. Honestly though, I rarely dipped into critical levels of peril because it was easier to manage with this passive. I took metal because any critical hits will replenish 5% of our toughness, and it will increase our movement speed as well. A great way to achieve this is chaining heavy attacks with our sword and simply aiming for the head. One with the warp will keep our damage reduction high whenever we're pushing our peril to critical numbers. I notice this mostly when we're using our staff, and it's perfect whenever horde encounters start to get overwhelming. With perfect timing, we can add even more warp damage for our brain rupture. 
Any critical hits will stack up to 3% free warp damage, and it can be stacked 5 times. The best way to achieve this is to stab some of the horde enemies and quickly swap over to your blitz to take out any bigger threat pushing to the team. One of the best passes for this build is Perilous Combustion. Every time that we kill an elite or specialist enemy, we apply up to 3 stacks of soul blades to any nearby enemy. You'll see enemies from a distance start to react to your flames as it spreads from another passive I'll get to soon. I chose Psychonetics Aura because it grants everyone a 5% ability cooldown whenever I kill an elite or a specialist enemy. This will keep the team's active abilities available whenever they're in coherency and it makes running through Maelstrom missions even easier. Now with Quietude we can gain 5% more toughness with every 10% of our peril we quell. This can also be procced by our passive Battle Meditation. This will give us a constant flow of toughness as we fluctuate with our peril generation. Alongside with that we'll use Soul Stealer, which replenishes our toughness with any warp attack kill. Now killing an enemy with our Brain Rush will generate toughness as quickly as quelling it. And with warp expenditure, we can replenish even more toughness with every 10% of peril generated. This is mostly procced whenever we're spraying flames down range with our staff. Now I love using Warp Rider as it can increase our damage up to 20% based off of our current peril. Sitting in high peril will just make every attack we have much stronger, and this is how we boost up our staff's damage as well. Once you hit around 60-75% to peril, you can juggle between quelling and outputting more damage. Ideally though, if you ever go over for any reason, you can activate your shriek to save yourself. And lastly, for my favorite passive within this themed build, Wildfire. With Wildfire, whenever an enemy dies to our Soul Blaze, other nearby enemies will also gain 4 stacks of Soul Blaze on themselves. This is a passive I love seeing in action because of how effective it can be. With our Shriek granting Soul Blaze, we want to whittle down as much health as we can. This allows Creeping Flames to kill any targets quickly, allowing our Soul Blaze to begin spreading. It takes a bit of practice, but if you're centralizing your abilities, it won't be difficult at all. You can even diminish Hordes very easily with this as well. As for my operative modifiers, you'll see why we wanted more toughness in our loadout. We only have a small boost in health and toughness, while most of our choices lean towards keeping our peril in check. We have a small boost in crit chance, as well as replenishing 10% of our toughness for everyone on the team. And that's it. In all honesty though, the melee weapon doesn't matter nearly as much as the staff, but like I said, it's personal preference. I have really enjoyed the damage flow of the dueling sword well over the blaze sword. But with the blaze sword, you can spread your soul blaze much easier, since spreading stacks can be easily attained from that blessing. I just found taking out heavier targets like Maulers and Ragers to be much easier with the Dueling Sword. If you want to see flames truly spread though, use any Blaze Sword you like with the Blazing Spirit Blessing. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed my version of creating a Fire Mage in Darktide. The Warp Flame Prince has set many souls ablaze, and will continue to do so. If anyone else has any more suggestions or classes that they enjoy building, please feel free to comment below or even share your build using the editor. I'll leave a link to the site in the description below along with the link to my build. Anyways, I'm going to go spread more flames across the hive city of Tertium. My name is Zen, and I hope to talk to you all again real soon. Have a nice weekend, and enjoy the rest of the match. indeed to converse with Stephanie. A breath of fresh air, never a bore, unlike some of our associates. Such a mind! We takes to sharpens to a razor point! Wait. We can tend our wounds here. Education. 
should be thronged with citizens. No return if we head onwards. They choose to join me. So work! Well, I suppose it could be us. Watch out! Gunner! We may heal here! Terminate! 
get done. Initiating crowd 